go. So we are going to start with the big boy stuff, which I personally am excited about. Starting with my favorite topic, the following up from the Don't Say Gay Bill discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, the first one isn't the greatest. Cast members were originally going to plan a massive walkout in protest of the Walt Disney Company's financial involvement with the bill. However, union union representatives advised against it. There will now be plans for many walkouts taking place in an effort to get support for a larger walkout in the near future. And I call BS because Mm -hmm. the whole reason that union reps are there is to make sure that like there's traction behind stuff and people aren't going to lose their jobs. If it already has traction, there's no need to postpone it. And the fact that like Disney isn't already like the fact that union reps are like, Disney's probably going to fire you if you walk out for that reason, even though they've stated that they're, they have support, that they, that they support the cause. It doesn't make sense that like, we'll fire you for support standing up for the cause, but we support the cause. And it's like, that's the point of the massive walkout, not many walkouts is you can't like fire all of are us. Do nothing, which is really upsetting. See the mini walkouts, in my opinion, have a bigger chance of getting people fired yeah because it's a small number of people and they can just replace them but you mm-hmm. can't replace you know 75 percent of the cast members overnight if they all do it at once exactly i think it's being set up and a little I'm bit. upset about it mm-hmm. um however there is a glimmer of light in this tunnel Meanwhile, Marvel made a social media post sharing their support. It states, we strongly denounce any and all legislation that infringes on the basic human rights of the LGBTQIA community. Marvel Studios stands for hope, inclusivity, and strength, and we proudly stand with the community. Today, we pledge to continue our strong commitment as allies who promote the values of equality, acceptance, and respect. Which, thank God, at least the branches of Disney are standing for it Mm -hmm. pixar marvel like at least they're not just sitting there with their exactly and i i don't know what marvel has done in terms of like creative wise in terms of in terms of supporting but i don't know (laughs) i know um we're also getting another thing regarding that regarding this uh Mm -hmm. pixar has made a step forward by announcing that a same-sex kiss that was originally cut from the movie lightyear will be restored which means pixar doesn't care anymore pixar no longer cares like they were told no and then they were like never mind they were like we'll forget what you said we're putting it back in i'm really excited for them yeah i'm i'm interested like i hope it's not like a a panning past the <laughs> the kiss kind of thing like it was in star like, there was like a star wars like implication and it was like really quick so i wonder if it's like not going to be a plot point thing Mm, i hope it is yeah okay who we we passing this off to sky yes we are so i was looking at like i already knew this but like for the marvel thing they the uh they had the gay superhero in eternals um Um, and then yeah that's also right, captain that's right. also captain marvel not officially that's speculation technically in the comics she is in the comics but that's this was so. by the studios this is um, they're also it's heavily implied <laughs> yeah also we're getting uh i can't remember their names right now but uh scarlet's sons hope not wicked and oh, um, wanda wicked and speed wanda, wanda's son yeah because yeah, yeah, wicked is gay also mm-hmm. in the comics so I hope they hold true too, but we'll find out. Yeah, and implication, I think at this point, is kind of the problem. It's been the problem. And I think that the blatancy is what's been needed now. So definitely Eternals was a good, is a good example. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, okay. So we're starting with the beginning? Yeah. Okay, that was really confusing. Okay. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the no, 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 no. What are you fucking talking about? Do you listen to me? Look at the part that's highlighted in blue. Underneath Jared's thing. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, Just I was like, yeah. I'm so... <laughs> anyway. 
Okay, so a local Florida news station reports that more than 100 people were arrested in prostitution, human trafficking, and child predatory, predatory sting in Polk County. I am disgusted. I, mm-hmm. I am... Keep going. It gets worse. Keep going. Okay. Investigators were able to identify sex workers as well as those who searched for those specific sex workers. Among those is a retired judge from Illinois, restaurant managers, and several Walt Disney World cast members. Mm. Sheriff Grady Judd reports that one of the cast members is a 27-year-old lifeguard at the Polynesian Resort, a 24-year-old cast member at Cosmic Rays in Tomorrowland, and a 45-year-old who worked in the IT department, all of whom are male, and all of them have been replaced by on, on unpaid uh, leave. So not fired, but just unpaid leave. Um, Which is ridiculous. Ridiculous. A large percent of the 108 arrested were soliciting a prostitute. One of the offended was a woman. The oldest person arrested was a 67-year-old, and the youngest was 17, so a minor. Yep. The investigation is still ongoing, so the full extent of the charges have not been fully placed. Okay, so I have a lot to say about this. The first thing that comes to mind is I'm not surprised. It's Disney World. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many kids that go there. I'm sure that a lot of people that work for the company, unfortunately, are like this. But I, I would inquire further investigation to see if there's more than just yeah. Um, mm-hmm. at least nothing has been done, you know, prior to this. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, good there but at the same time it's also really but horrible. at the same time like if this has been under our noses the whole time i would no, yeah i was i was talking to differ that maybe there is something going on that we just don't know about yeah no for sure i was talking to um your friend the other day uh mm-hmm. about i was talking to gavin um and since he works at disney World or disneyland he was telling me that a large like part of the disneyland uh workers are like this Mm. so Mm. and a lot of his like the people that he works with like in the uh in his job like hit on minors all the time and it's very very like openly blatant yeah that they're doing this i think it's super important that we need i think it's super important that this has to be called out Um, oh yeah because if we don't talk about it and if we again like i keep saying with every single time that these topics come up if we don't bring it up and if we don't bring it to attention then this then it's going to keep being yeah it's going to it's going to keep happening i just i feel really really bad for the people involved and you know what's even worse i wasn't going to talk about this but i feel like since we're on this topic we need to the fact that you know it wasn't like normal aged people the people that were involved were infants Mm -hmm. six Mm -hmm. months old to five years old Mm -hmm. was what was being shared explicitly around disney world was literally newborn children um that is so much darker than you know it it could have been and the fact that this is supposed to be a safe place for kids is what is haunting yeah no it's horrible i i don't even know i i know this is beating a dead horse at this point but um a lot of this stuff i do fully put responsibility for uh on bob tapek when Mm -hmm. shit doesn't happen because put on unpaid leave ridiculous um i can't remember his name who was the last ceo uh Iger. Iger. yes if Iger stood up for this stuff all the time mm-hmm. if if it was Iger, these cast members would have been fired Fired and a public announcement stated. Oh, I wouldn't even. I would even beg to differ. I was going to say an investigation among like the people and the company involved. Like, yeah, it's one thing to you know fire the cast members, but especially if Iger was you know CEO, he would have done a thorough investigation of not only Disney World but Disneyland fully. 
and I know it's beating it at horse and I know it's a long a long stretch but I have to give responsibility to Che Peck yeah I almost absolutely. said paycheck <laughs> well well I just I find it so dumb that cast members could get fired for walking out in support of the LGBTQ community but don't get fired for getting arrested that's what's happening sex trafficking. that's what's happening with JPEG. and i think yep. if the disney execs were smart they'd boot them out real fast yeah it's one thing after another and after another and after another and speaking of one thing after another are, are, do you have anything more to say are we ready to move on nope i'm ready to hear I, this uh, story i feel like if i say anything else i'm just gonna be pissed mm-hmm. um because i'm sick of this shit especially mm-hmm. from disney mm-hmm let alone Universal Studios, Mm -hmm. you know, I would say we're, you know, Disney World is one of those things that should be and is considered the top of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Not even that, but the top of like family entertainment. And we're the families. We're the ones that are shitting everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're doing horribly. I I have they they want to lose money. It seems point. like oh, JPEG I'm fucking done. At like at one point, I just want to have like, how can we convince all of us as a whole, as a whole collective community, to just stop for like a week or a day and just see what happens? I want him to watch his numbers drop, and then realize he has to do something. Yep. Okay. okay. Yeah. Continue on to, you know, the true wonder of disney world go ahead the real right. fun can't one. wait for this and the real fun one um i'm gonna be talking for quite a bit so strap on in and if you don't have anything productive to say then this is a great time to listen no, i'm ready here we go because productive listening is the key to understanding what's happening here when you don't when you have a discussion about race and don't listen enough that is when you cross the territory into ignorance. Listening is the most important thing. Um, So a massively racist display has taken place in Magic Kingdom when a Texas high school performed on Main Street wearing Native American costumes and chanting an incredibly insensitive chant among their cheering parents. That's just, that's that's the blanket statement, right? We're gonna dive into this a little bit. Um, So what exactly happened? Well, um, a Native American Twitter creator shared the video, which was originally posted to Facebook by a parent of one of the drill team members. Um, it, depicted, it depicted the school, uh, the marching band ahead of the dancers who were wearing purple costumes, which mocked Native American garb. And I say mocked because that's the way that I looked at it. But I, I, you'll find out later. I, these, I think these people thought they were genuinely respecting the culture. And again, we're going to dive into why that's wrong. Okay. Um, the girls uh, were performing what looks like a copy of a Native American traditional dancing, uh, traditional dance, which again, I'll explain why that's wrong, uh, whilst shouting scalp them, Indian scalp them. So here's why that phrase is wrong. The term scalp them refers to colonizers hunting and murdering Native Americans for sport and, and removing their scalps as the prize. So if imagine if you're watching this and you're in rural whatever imagine your uncle joe's going out and shooting a deer and bringing back the horns they did that with human beings colonizers did that to actual human beings back in the day and so and referred to that as scalp them um and so this these group of white cheerleaders are shouting that bringing that phrase back um, and in, that's why that is an inappropriate thing to say with, in reference to that culture. Um, the term Indians is also offensive because Indians is a term for Native Americans um, that Columbus used when he arrived to America because he didn't think he was in America. He thought he was in India. That's why, they're, that's why people have been calling them Indians for so long. They're not Indians. I kind of want anybody who says in the word Indians to me, I'm like, you mean the people in Asia? Is that what you mean? Or do you mean the native people of this country? Because 
the, the the idea of it was that like oh you're brown so you must be from india so i'm in india right um and it's calling them indians is clumping people of color together which is the number one thing i promise you that we all hate besides getting murdered for no reason um mm. and um so the the high school is called um uh, port niche high grove high school in uh, port niche texas which is, I, th- I don't know if I'm saying that wrong, Neches, Port Neches, something like that. Uh, we just call it PNGHS is what we're calling it. Or Port Niche, high- yeah. Port Niche, which is the yeah. high school. It's I've just silent, it. yeah. Um, so it is several miles east of Houston and their mascot is the Indian and their drill team is called the Indianettes. Their playing field is called the Reservation. And oh, here, and here's okay. Why that's, and here's why that's wrong. The term reservation in reference to Native Americans is also used as a mark of a specific spot of land that is government sanctioned for Native American tribes. These white people are literally saying we're this Native American tribe on this Native American land. That's what they're saying. Um, They claim their mascot is allowed because the Cherokee Nation dubbed them ambassadors of goodwill, quote unquote, in 1979. However, a new chief was appointed and revoked that permission in July of 2020 due to his disgust towards their school's fight song chant. To this day, school board administrators believe they are still allowed to continue with these traditions because it honors the native land they live on. Meanwhile, how do they think they are able to live on that land? I'm just Killing saying. Native Americans. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It all comes around to the same fucking thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. So Port Niche submitted an audition tape to Disney World to perform in the 2022 parade and purposefully omitted their chant in order to get into the parade. In rehearsals, the quote-unquote Indianettes showed up in their headdresses and one Disney cast member involved was brave enough to tell them they were not allowed to march with them. It started a whole fight with the moms. Meanwhile, photos were taken of the girls in headdresses in front of Disney logos on Disney property. Great. Um, mm. So, so there's the next thing. If you if you are Sally from Oklahoma, being like, "Well, I wore a headdress to Halloween last year. Why is that wrong?" Well, great question, Sally. Let's go. Native American headdresses are a symbol of bravery and strength and are only worn by those in the tribe who fought in brutal battles and survived. If you still don't understand, a headdress is synonymous with things like an American Medal of Honor or a Purple Heart. Oh, it's it's really important. Yeah. And American soldiers will tell you, you don't want to go through what you need to go through to earn a Purple Heart. You don't want it because what it's, it involves blood trauma some end up dead putting your Mm -hmm. life on the line and americans have this true respect for their troops and understand what it takes to serve for this country it's the same thing for native americans who wear headdresses they those are the troops to them and so to wear that without earning it is a massive sign of disrespect beyond belief so few in tribes were awarded of, of this honor, the honor of wearing one. And it is disgusting when you just go out and wear a headdress like that. Um, for an all white team uh, to wear a headdress because their football team is good is extremely disrespectful because they're, oh, it's bravery and strength. Okay, your 14, 14 year old Tim who plays quarterback is not, the same thing as earning a purple heart it's not if you and if you agree with that then then you shouldn't be wearing a headdress period end of story um i'm so this next bit i put in here because i'm mad um i'm not sorry i'm not calling it a controversy get that word out of your vocabulary it is not controversial that the people who were originally supposed to be on this land were wrongfully massacred and are now being disrespected by the legacy of the people who took that away from them it's not a controversy there is no argument it is disrespectful Mm -hmm. moving on once the video went viral and outrage poured out online disney released a statement saying that we regret the performance that took place as it did did not reflect the audition tape that was submitted and read that again it did not reflect the audition tape that was submitted 
we have immediately put measures in place to ensure performances reflect auditions. This is kind of funny considering that the high school has performed at Disney World in 2006, 2008, and 2020 before this particular performance. I think there was a total of eight performances. I think the districts, the school district said that, that there was a total of eight performances at Disney World. Uh, Melissa Burton on Twitter was one of the other visiting high schools. So she was in the band of the, band, of the group that performed just before them. Um, and she sent out some reply tweets about what happened that day. Uh, and I quote, I was there with another group performing just before this band. I stood in the hub in front of the castle as they marched by. Our directors and tour guide witnessed the headdress fiasco backstage. There was no chant in the performance that I saw, no chant backstage. So she's saying she the, they, get, they get to rehearse beforehand so yeah. Disney can kind of review the performance before you go out on stage. And that's when the bands get to watch each other. And so she's saying she did not see the chant before they went on stage. Um, the chant was performed at the end of the parade only in front of their large parent group. They strategically did this, stopped against the rules, and did the chant. Mm -hmm. um, to have them there in the first place never should have happened. And it's not hard to say that this is an incredibly racist high school. It's really not. A quick Google search and you would have gotten it immediately. So that for me is on Disney personally for even letting it happen in 2006, let alone in 2022. I don't know why giving them a second chance was even an idea. Giving them a, a, a ninth chance was an idea that they had in their head. Um, so that's kind of the end of where that story is. Um, I hope that this is an educational and informational moment for those who were unaware of why this particular performance is wrong. Because I think that we, if you're on one side of the coin, you think, okay, this is wrong, but there's no thought behind that this is just wrong okay well we get to figure out why this is wrong and if you're on the other side of the coin where you don't think it's wrong but you don't have any thought to that i hope that this also told you, this gave you more context i hope relating it to more american ideals is what helps you put yourself in somebody else's shoes um because I don't think you'd want to be disrespected like that so why would you disrespect somebody else like another human yeah, being like that no for sure um so I, I think that, um, and also I hope it helps people realize why Disney needs to publicly denounce and ban anyone who runs or supports this particular high school. Um, it's sad to me that not a lot of people seem to understand why not properly seeing, why not properly respecting Native Americans is wrong. So if you walk away with anything from this, it's that we have been giving the indigenous people of this land the worst of ourselves and we must do better. We are on their land, and this is their house. Our ancestors did not act like it, but we who know better now need to act like it. It's also important to note that we should be condemning the parents and educators who have told these impressionable children that what they're doing is right and should be celebrated. I don't think we should necessarily blame the children because they are children and could have been taught better. But it's the parents and the teachers who who have been cheering them on this whole Well, I was going to say not only that, like, so you're only in high school for what four years right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but how long has that you know when you said 1967 was when they had uh, uh 1979 okay so over 40 ish years since they had that like you know that's their mascot and motto of 40 years of blatant racism mm -hmm. so like that was that that wasn't even on the kids that was fully on the staff of that school mm -hmm. which is um, even worse exactly um so one member of the school board has already told social media runners to deactivate their account so the massive outpouring of emails being sent to them is doing something um i wish it would do something more on the lines of accountability instead of running and hiding but that's just me um, students and former students have been protesting for so long and we need to help make their voices louder. Um, so I actually have the phone number for the school. If you are interested in it, it is 409-729-7644. I'll read that one more time. It's 409-729-7644. You can also send a letter to the school at 1401 Merriman, Port Niche, Texas, 
77651. You can email the, the superintendent of the school at gauthier, which is G-A-U-T-H-I-E-R at P-N-G-I-S-D dot org. Or you can also email the high school's principal at S Ryan, that's S R Y A N at P N G I S D dot org. Uh, meanwhile, if we're also going to start advocating and supporting respect for Native Americans, then we also need to talk about the Peter Pan riot and how the depictions of the indigenous people need to go. Oh, they for sure. need to go. And that is on Disney. It's just picking up a couple of statues and moving on. Get well, not out. only that, they could just remake the statues and just change them. They could. I personally am a fan of just leaving Tiger Lily in there on her own. Yeah, because I don't fine. think I don't think Tiger Lily herself is a bad depiction. Well, that that's living think, in the character too. I think the beauty of her and promoting the beauty of that character in particular is fine, but it's just everyone else but her is drawn so racistly yeah and it's it's yeah. blatant in 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 the movie and to copy that for this for the ride and keep it in there in this 20 in this year of our lord 2022 is wrong so uh, also i yes. would like to say before we move on mm -hmm. um if you support the actions of what disney's doing with the don't say gay bill or support the actions of this high school or support any of the actions of the uh, issues that we've been discussing this isn't the podcast for you mm -mm. clearly <laughs> please I hope, just... we, I hope we made that obvious <laughs> and even though we are a disney podcast if disney continues down an awful path that they've been continuing down it's not going to be a disney podcast anymore <laughs> it's a yeah, harry potter podcast no that's worse well i was going <laughs> to say we could do a lot with universal too there's a lot of really cool stuff with that yeah. park that we don't Cause, talk about because we're not going to support all this shit mm -hmm. like it shouldn't be a news episode of us reprimanding them and then oh we're it's a normal episode every other day of the week like mm -hmm. no if it continues down this path we're we need to rethink Disney. about like the mm -hmm. way we organize this show because exactly. i don't want to keep advocating you know somewhere that i thought meant you know a lot to me mm -hmm. but it's fucking up so many other people's lives mm -hmm. uh, i think what what hits me the most is the fact that they're they're <laughs> They're keeping on, you know, workers that sexually ex, ex how do I explain Exploit. this? Exploit. Yeah, minors for one, and sell them on the and literally everywhere. Like the, I saw like a whole thing on like the black market that they were talking about with the police force. Like I, I watched like a thirty minute like segment with the police chief of Florida, like talk about like the people and like the the lengths that they had to go to just to catch one of them. Mm -hmm. the the guy who worked on the falcon had over 900 photos of pre children mm -hmm. not even five years old being sexually assaulted wow like how disgusting. how wow it was hor and then it, the, they showed a lot of the stuff that they had to go through too to find it Mm -hmm. and it was horrible mm -hmm. like i can't i can't keep celebrating a company that does this to people it's hard looking at the falcon now honestly well not only uh, that not just good. in general like mm -hmm. you know you go to where you know you think that it's going to be like a really special time and they literally just arrested a guy for stalking minors i don't know if you mm -hmm. knew about that he was stalking minors and grabbing their asses in the middle of like three different rides. Oh yeah, That's I disgusting. heard about that. Yeah, that was a guest. Yeah, he was a guest, but that still, like it yeah. happened at that park mm -hmm. again, and they didn't really do shit about it. They could they have stopped him. No, it. they arrested him after, mm -hmm. but they didn't stop him. Like mm -hmm. he fought. He literally followed the couple and the kids to multiple attractions to sexually assault them. Mm -hmm. 
at a Disney park in the middle of the daytime. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. Like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. Um, if there's anything else you want to say and get out, I wrote two pages of everything. Feel I have free to say. because I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't have to. I wouldn't go off. I am good. Okay. Well, I am sorry if you are involved in this ca- any of these cases because it's it's tragic. Mm-hmm. It's horrible. Unless, unless you're one of the uh, sexual harassers, in which case, get out of our podcast. Well, yeah. <laughs> unless you're A, at that school, A, you know, part of that whole Indian thing that happened in Disney World, mm-hmm. if you're part of or, you know, agree with any of the LGBT, you know, hate that's going on, again, get the fuck out of here. Please. Like, <laughs> I don't care. I don't have time for this. I came to enjoy the night and have fun, not deal with 50 year old bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And with that, dream a fucking fantastic dream, assholes. Oh my God. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to cut that out. <laughs> <laughs>